Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, it's 11 o'clock uh, Brussels time, of course. Um, we will be waiting um, a few more minutes to see if more people join. Uh, some people might have trouble downloading the, um, the app to, to join the webinar. Um, so please be, uh, I will ask you to be patient for very, very few more minutes and then we we'll get started. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I think we have already more than 46 people connected, so I think we can get started and um, whoever will join later will just uh, catch on. Uh, so my name is Guillaume Corradino. I am uh, working uh, as, uh, in the Sinfonia project. Uh, Sinfonia project is a project that is organizing this um, series of webinars. So today we are talking about uh, how to become a smart city. Uh, this is the first of the series of webinars, which you can see uh, hopefully on, on your screen now. Um, a few words before we start about the Sinfonia project. Sinfonia project is a smart city project uh, funded by the European Commission as part of the FP7 program. Um, it is coordinated by uh, RISE, a Research Institute of Sweden. We have a few participants representing the, um, uh, the organization, including the, the coordinator, Hello Hogan. Um, Sinfonia is, is a very, very big project, a lot of things going on. We have more than 25 partners. Um, the budget is, is above 40 million euros. Um, and the concept is, if you're not familiar with the Smart Cities project concept, is to bring together a pioneer city, or if you prefer in the new terminology, uh, lighthouse cities. So in this case, the cities of Bolzano and Innsbruck. Um, who will be implementing innovative uh, energy solution at a large scale, so district scale, covering building refurbishment, district heating and cooling, and uh, the electricity grid. We also have in the project five so-called early adopter cities, um, the cities of Boros, Sevilla, La Rochelle, and Paphos uh, in Cyprus. That's only four, and I'm missing one. It's uh, Rosenheim in Germany. 
so the early adopters uh, follow and uh, get involved in the in the work of the um, of the pilot cities and uh, especially they get involved in the development of tools and the validation of um, of tools and solutions that come out of the project so besides the actual demonstration that are taking place in the lighthouse Symfonia is developing a lot of tools that you will hear about if you follow the series of webinars. Um, so today you will not hear everything about the project. That's why we have six webinars coming up. Uh, if you go on the website Symfonia uh, smartcities.eu, you can see the link on the screen. You can already register to all of them. So please don't hesitate to do so. We also have um, a so-called cluster of replication cities, uh, which is a group of more than 40 cities that are um, to, uh, to um, a lesser degree following also what the project is doing and we are organizing these webinars and many other activities, uh, mainly for them, but of course we are open to everybody. So today the idea is to um, answer the question that we've heard many times when we talk about replication in smart cities projects, which is, okay, I understand what they do in this building, but first I want to know what the city uh, how the city got there. So what is the story behind? So as introduction to the webinar series, we are going to hear from uh, the two uh, pilot cities of Sinfonia, Bolzano and Innsbruck, and they will tell us, they will give us a big picture. So how they went from the idea of the project to the implementation and share some uh, lessons learned and conclusion um, from that. Uh, so Sinfonia has been running since 2014 and it's going to end in um, June this year. So there is really a lot to unpack and we will try to be as concise as possible. Before I give the floor to um, to the speakers, uh, just practical details. So we are using GoToWebinar now. As you can see or as you should see on the on the control panel, you have um, the option to raise your hands to ask a question. So there will be a time for question after each presentation. And I will give the floor to, um, to as many people as I can. And you also have the option to ask questions in writing. Um, there is a little uh, space for that um, in the lower part of the control panel. So you can write the question, we will see it and um, try to answer. And yes, we have a question already from someone asking um, whether we are able to see something else than the list of webinars. And of course, of course, uh, you will have the presentations from the speakers themselves. So this is just a, a background image. Uh, so don't worry, we have more to offer than just this slide. All right, so in order to get started, um, we'll start with Klaus Klevein, who is working at the uh, standard, uh, I will pronounce it better, the innovation agency of uh, um, Tyrol in um, in Austria. Uh, they have been piloting the work in Innsbruck and it will be uh, able to, to give you all um, the big picture. Um, the next speaker will be Rosita Izzo from the municipality of Bolzano. But first we hear from, uh, from Klaus. So Klaus, I give you the floor, making you presenter now. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Guillaume. Hello, Hakan. And hello all to all the participants which are here listening to my presentation. As Guillaume said, I'm Klaus Klewein, working at the Standort Agentur Tirol, which is the regional agency for innovation and technology. And we have the honor of being the local um, coordinator of this project. As you have heard, also Hakan from Sweden is attending the webinar. He is the coordinator of the overall project and the two pilot cities itself. Uh, each of them has its own coordinator. And I have the honor of being one of those guys uh, coordinating the pilot city of Innsbruck. Um, what can you expect from my presentation from the next 20 minutes is in principle, just telling you a little bit an overview, who are the partners, how did we, did we develop this project in Innsbruck, uh, what are the most important demo measures. However, I won't go into detail um, because I think in the following webinars you get more technical 
presentations about refurbishments and also the smart grids and other things. So I think it's worth attending the next webinars to hear these issues. And of course, in the end, I will also talk about the challenges along the way, as well as uh, lessons learned, which might also be of your interest. And I hope to get some questions from your side. Well, to start, um, so, um, so. Um, here you see um, the, how the Innsbruck Consortium um, is formed. Um, we are the local coordinator, having with us the demo partners of IKB, which is the local uh, energy utility. NHT and IAG are the local housing companies um, which were in charge of the refurbishments. TIGAS uh, was in charge of the district heating network. University of Innsbruck, of course, is doing all uh, which has to do with monitoring. Uh, of course, one of the main partners is the municipality of Innsbruck, which um, had the basis for this project. And we have the Passive House Institute doing the quality insurance of the refurbishments and some industry partners, um, as well as Alt-S, which was doing the stakeholder analysis, which you will also see in the next minutes. So, I think uh, an important question, how was this project set up? Um, I think everything started with a trip to Brussels, where, which you can see here, there was a delegation together with the Tyrolean Minister for Economic Affairs and many other let's say, representatives of uh, the industry and other political institutions. And this was more or less um, in December of 2011. Um, just to make you aware of, this is almost one year before we handed in the proposal of this project. This was handed in on the 4th of December in 2012. So this trip to Brussels was the let's say, start of the project. First talks were um, and discussions were made between and among the participants. And as well, the smart city call uh, was presented um, to the participants. Also a member of this delegation was the Cluster for Renewable Energies, Tyrol. Um, just for your information, the Regional Development Agency is hosting five um, clusters. One of those is the cluster for renewable energies and as well uh, companies from this cluster went to Brussels. They started developing the idea of participating in this call and developing a smart city project um, in Innsbruck and uh, being a lighthouse city in one of these projects. Well, um, also in the agency we have a funding team which is in charge of uh, European funding. Um, this is quite an important uh, pillar also of the development. So we had the cluster which was in charge of the industry and we had the funding team which was more into the administrative issues, how to set up this project, uh, the whole financial plan and so on and so forth. For your information also, it might be important that the municipality of Innsbruck had already developed a set plan, a strategic energy development plan. Um, which was also a prerequisite for attending this call. Um, so this was the basis for this. Well, Tyrol is not only known for skiing, um, we also have already developed quite a high, high standard um, of our building companies in terms of energy co efficient construction. For example, is Innsbruck at the moment, um, well, Innsbruck has only 140,000 inhabitants though, uh, it is hosting most passive houses in Austria uh, at the moment. Even more, we had concept, uh, concepts of the uh, internal uh, utility company to transform the wastewater treating, treatment plant from, let's say, just being a wastewater treatment plant into a producer of energy. Um, plans of uh, the extension of a district heating network were also there. And um, the University of Innsbruck has a department for energy efficient construction, um, which is also quite important um, to participate in this call. 
So this was the basis. Now we started running to the politics to get their commitment for these projects, because as you can imagine, a project with overall funding of 20, more than 27 million of euros needs also some support from the background, even more if we are dealing with uh, municipalities. Um, this is quite important. Innsbruck also started uh, to approach our partners from Bolzano. Um, for example, we have this uh, European territorial um, cooperation of the Euregio, which means North Tyrol and the part of South Tyrol, uh, which is the north of Italy, uh, is member of those. So Bolzano was for us the clear partner um, for this project, even more as we had already connections to the URAC, which is the local coordinator in Bolzano. And as it has almost the same uh, size of city, uh, a little bit above 100,000 inhabitants. So we started finding more partners as Greenaway for being the responsible for communication, Sabala, which is doing the project management. And last but not least, uh, one of the main uh, part of this project was finding a coordinator because the pilot cities itself um, didn't see themselves in the in the position of being the coordinator of this. So we needed some, let's say, more objective person to do this. And in Sweden, we found this coordinator in person of Hakan Persla, uh, who was doing a good job with these two cities, which have not always been the most easiest partners in this project. Well, then we started and agreed on writing a proposal. The proposal was handed in in December 2012, and then we got the, uh, a nice letter from the Commission saying that um, it was approved. The project with more than more than 30 partners also had, of course, to make a consortium agreement, which is a requisite of all European projects. This lasted quite a long time, as also in Innsbruck were quite a lot of let's say newbies in terms of European projects. So the final start was in June 2014. I hope I explained quite well the way, um, as Guillaume already mentioned, after the presentation there is lots of room for questions. So to make you an idea, this was the energy plan in 2011. It is not anymore really concise with the Green Deal, uh, which von der Leyen was just presenting a few days ago. Even more, this is more or less also what is about the goals we have in Sinfonia, uh, about 50% of energy savings, uh, the increase of 30% of renewable energies, and of course, which is a result of those measures, is less CO2 emissions. So we, what was clear is that we couldn't transform whole Innsbruck within six years into a smart city. So we elected um, the east of the city to being the smart district. So most of the measures, let's say nine, more than 90% of the measures of the refurbishments and so on, uh, took place in this smart district. Therefore, um, so that in the end we can also prove our results. We had to um, calculate the baseline. Um, in this case, you see the calibrated heat demand and in the center of town where there is quite red, it is a good place uh, to connect it with the district, district heating network as lots of demand is shown there. On the next, uh, you see the specific heat demand and you see, of course, that Innsbruck has quite a demand in uh, renovations as the buildings, well, let's say back in 2013, were not the most efficient ones, except the green part. But this was also uh, the, one of the reasons we entered into this project. So, and this, I think now we come to one of the most important issues. We had to integrate several systems from refurbishment to the energy distribution to heat distribution. And also, if we talk about refurbishments, these were done um when the people were still staying in their flats so we had some social um, under quotation marks interference which was also something which had to put us under pressure 
just in short, this was the district heating system in blue um, back in 2011. Um, now you see what we have reached during the last six years where the district heating network was done. Maybe on the lower right corner you see there is also the connection to the wastewater treatment plant which is there. Um, so you see we are producing more energy there and it's also um, feed it into the network to have a higher share of renewable energy. Already many, uh, mentioned is the wastewater treatment plant, which was more or less transformed into a power plant as before the project this was um, using more energy than it produced and now it's generating more energy than it used itself and therefore it's feeding into the district heating network, it's also heating the public indoor swimming pool and it also generates more energy. Being part of a project like this also makes the companies being more innovative or let's say it also pressures them to be innovative because the commission doesn't want to see solutions which have already been um, let's say produced in lots of cities, they want to see something new. And if you see this gray building here, this is the transformation station in the center of Innsbruck. And in the background, you see the headquarter of the utility company. Behind this gray building, um, there is this transformation station and the heat pump was installed there, which nowadays is, um, let's say, giving the heat energy to the headquarter of more than 70 percent. So the headquarter reduced its energy demand from other uh, sources of 70 percent. This is, has also been one of the, let's say, most trickiest projects. It's the IKB Smart City Lab and they developed a hybrid grid. Uh, what is a hybrid grid? A hybrid grid is in principle, um, everybody knows what is a smart grid. It is the intelligent connection of, uh, of, of uh, electricity and there is also the uh, intelligent, let's say, connection of thermal energy. And in this smart city lab, they try to combine both things, which is not easy, which hasn't been developed so far that many times. And is, of course, as the name says, a laboratory for finding new ideas of, of business models. It's of how are, is it working? How is this energy management system in the background working? As you, how is a heat pump together with a power to heat, with a, a cold heat and power plant, with batteries, with solar uh, energy working together? And how is this? let's say laboratory working how it should of course as a laboratory is not everything worked fine from the beginning but now after one year of usage uh, we are coming close to being um, everything fine here you have uh, an overview of what is the energy consumption in innsbruck as you can see more or less 80 percent of the energy consumption is um, based on the buildings. In Sinfonia, um, the majority was residential buildings which were refurbished, but also three schools, let's say public buildings have been refurbished um, to see how this works. As I told you in the beginning, I will not focus on the refurbishments, but just to make you an idea, um, this is before and after uh, the pictures of the buildings. As you can here see, uh, there is, has been quite a huge transformation of the buildings, even more, what, which is quite important if you refurbish these buildings and you see there have been balconies before. Don't even let the idea come to your mind that you get rid of these balconies because um, the people living in these flats won't be in favor of these measures, so you won't refurbish because the Austrian law says that you need between 75 and 100 percent of approval from the tenants uh, that you can refurbish the building. This is one of the school buildings, as you can see the, the, the thermal envelope as well as the windows, the shading, 
and also inside you can maybe see that the lighting has been uh, renewed and in the background here you see where the fresh air comes in and in the front where the pupils are breathing out the bad air is extracted from the room. Um, with the light system maybe this was not a focus of Sinfonia but it was also tried to have a constant daylight during the day in order to make the pupils um, more interested in the in the education and first let's say after surveys post surveys of the refurbishment measures show that the whole climate in the schools has been improved through these measures now coming to one of the challenges of Symphonia, and this is the stakeholder involvement which of course you have in a living environment or what a city is and talking about refurbishment you see in the center that the customers the residents the energy consumers and the schools are in the center and are the end users around you see that you need you have quite a lot of people being stakeholders of a refurbishment which you need to get as we call it in, in german into the same boat this is of course connected with lots of discussions of all these partners because we wanted to make an integral refurbishments we needed the planners we needed the university of uh, providing the monitoring we needed of course the building owners who had to plan everything of this issue and on the right side you also see that you have local and regional authorities with laws with let's say um issues which which have has also been uh yeah quite challenging for the housing companies because as you might know that there are some legal constraints of building uh, PV panels on a multifamily houses. This showed us also that we had to develop new business models of finding a way on distributing solar energy to residents in multifamily buildings. Well, as we talk about all, all our measures, I think it's also important to mention that these measures have to be monitored for 12 months. Why is this important? Because we also need a proof for the European Commission that these measures work, or in case they don't work, that they don't work. And even more that to prove that uh, what we developed on paper is worth uh, being replicated in the future in Europe. And when I talk about replica replicability, all of you who are listening to me at the moment, and also the mentioned early adopter cities and uh, cluster cities, might also be interested in our results and we are happy to transfer on our knowledge which we gained in the last years um, to our following cities and of course to you. Here you see a picture of Winsbrook which is let's say in the heart of the Alps uh, surrounded by the mountains and it might not be clear what has this to do with uh, an early adopter city like Paphos which is nearby the sea. Even more, Paphos as well as Innsbruck has, let's say, biological resources which they can use to generate energy. When we talk about Innsbruck, uh, we have long winters, so our focus is more on making the houses quite um, isolated in terms of, of against the cold. In Paphos, I think isolation, insulation of the houses is more important in terms of not being overheated in the summer. So I think that it might be contradictory that uh, I talk about these two cities, but in the end you see that uh, uh, intelligent refurbished house is resistant against the heat in winter, either uh, the summer and also against the cold in winter. And I think this is a quite an important issue that cities also near the sea might need this transfer from our side and as far as I know they have also been in contact with the Klima House Agency of Italy as there is lots of tourism in Paphos as well and there has been developed uh, some kind of certificate for hotels and so I think this is quite an interesting point to focus on. So what have been the challenges in the last couple of years being coordinator of this project? Of course changes in our consortium as people tend to change their jobs within six years. I had to face 
all the time different people and they had to get into this project which is quite complex as you have seen we have lots of legal issues uh, to overcome when we think about data protection laws uh, when you're monitoring some flats you also need the permissions of these uh, of the inhabitants and even more as the housing company is the owner of the house you need also data let's say data transfer agreements between the authorities between the companies who will work with these data these are the contracts and of course i think everybody is aware of the gdpr of the general data protection regulation which was um, put in life uh, uh, also some months ago and we also had to change our our habits in terms of data and working with other people and this was also not easy during a project where already some contracts had been developed to make them also on the uh, let's say standard of the gdpr the tenant approval for the renovations in the beginning was also quite important which also made let's say uh, our housing companies have quite an a uh, huge knowledge about energy conf uh, efficient construction but you also need to get these people on your side so the whole communication towards the tenants was an important important issue and it also helped us to develop this process negative press releases and so on and so forth were also not uh, quite happy in the beginning but we overcame these issues so why should you participate in one of these projects i think the, the most important issue is a better quality of life for the inhabitants of of the city a more efficient energy distribution and also what is nowadays discussed um, let's say on all levels of politics now now in davos um, even more it's, we have the ipcc and we have the european commission and so we are also tackling the issue of fast implementation towards a low carbon society. There are lots of partners in this project and lots of those partners started cooperating with other partners and this was also, let's say, helping to have a mutual learning process on both sides. And as you know, cooperation is always good for both, but it also takes long in the beginning, but in the end, the result is better and we managed to get this uh, things done and we overcame the challenge of getting different people uh, fighting for one, for one goal. Even more, several partners of this project have already handed in proposals for follow-up projects, even some have already been applied. And this is of course also a, a very important issue that we don't stop with Symphonia and this has been it. Uh, now we also focus on further projects on different issues uh, which are quite important that we get this innovation culture as I mentioned in the last point as companies had to get this uh, this issue done now that this change was quite important that they saw okay innovation projects are really important for ourselves and also for the whole city. I don't want to talk longer because the most important uh -huh. things are the questions so I'm happy to receive some questions for your side, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you very much, Klaus. Um, uh, as organizer, I, I, I think I claim the right to ask the first question. Um, um, it was a long process from, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the ID came um, uh, in 2011. Why did the municipality and, and the largest partners uh, went through the trouble because it's it's not easy i mean uh, smart cities project funded by the european commission is is a you know as as you know yourself it's a pretty um fixed framework that you have to live with for a few years uh, otherwise you have to go through contract amendments and so on so what was the main argument was the idea originally to really become a lighthouse and a showcase for the region and to inspire other innovators in the region or was it mainly and first of all uh, to get funds so i think as the regional development agency for us it was really important to make the companies part of a european project to raise the awareness of the companies that innovation is important and also we had a huge basis to build on 
as you saw, we had the set plan and everything done. And of course, as you mentioned, um, receiving funding from the European Commission also helps to get the people um, in the boat and to make uh, the project done. Um, so I think it's uh, it's part of both. And when you, as we had this trip to Brussels and our Minister for Economic Affairs heard of the possibility of participating in one of these projects, of course, this is also attractive. Um, having Innsbruck as one of the lighter cities within Europe um, or becoming one of the lighter cities within Europe. And as we have seen in the last years, lots of investment has been done uh, within Tyrol and therefore also um, workforce has been used and this also is of course uh, all positive on the uh, regional eco uh, economic system and as well on the innovative let's say spirit what we have as you know um, our countries in the north as Sweden are the innovation leaders Austria is one of these in innovation followers and if you want to become a leader as well you need to go yes you need to it's a new path. Okay, so thank you. So also very important to look beyond the uh, monetary aspect and, and and see it as investment. Right, uh, time for questions for people. So please, if you have one, you can raise your hand. Um, you should have the option to do so on the left-hand side control panel. There is a little column there with some icons. If you would like to ask something now to Klaus, please uh, raise your hand. And I will give you the floor. Uh, while people are deciding whether to ask a question or not, uh, I can already tell you, and I hope it's okay with you, Klaus, that we, we are happy to share the presentation. There is nothing confidential in it, so um, you will have all the time in the world to, to see it again. Uh, same for the next presentation of the, uh, sorry, of the next webinars, so for the more technical input. Uh, we might have some written questions instead. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, Klaus, I assume you don't see the question, so I will read them. Do you have any data related to economical benefits for local companies that were involved in the in the project? So I am assuming um, besides the direct employment contract of the people who worked on the buildings and, and other works. Um, a follow-up question was, were the workforce mostly local or did you require workers from other regions? Um, in terms of the companies, of course, as local coordinator, I do not have the data on what uh, was the investment on their side. What we have or what we will have in the future is what the impact was in the regional economy. And the investment was about um, 90 million or between 80 and 90 million euros only within the region of Tyrol. Um, in terms of workforce, um, our companies contracted um, quite a lot. Uh, so if it was possible, of course, uh, the nearer the workforce is from, the better it is. But as we are talking about an innovative project, not everything, um, uh, we do not have the resources for everything within Tyrol. So we also had to contract companies uh, from Switzerland, from Germany, from Italy as well, uh, in order to get our um, challenges done. Okay, so thank I hope you. that answers the question. Um, if not, please tell me what you want to know more. <laughs> yes, please don't don't be shy. I, I see people asking questions in writing, but please raise your hand and you can ask it um, out loud. Uh, while you think about your shyness, I will keep reading the question uh, which we have received in writing. So a follow-up question to that. Uh, regarding the uh, the skills and the training of the contractors, uh, were there any issue or need to train the companies that were involved in the works, or was it already plan of the uh, a part of the terms of references, meaning that you already had people with the proper skills and they just had to implement the plans? No, of course not. Um, as I said before, we it's an innovative project and refurbishments while people are staying in their flats had never been done before in Innsbruck. So we had to find ways of putting the uh, hot ventilation air condition systems. We had to put um, new technologies and of course the 
the employees of the contractors um, had it themselves had never worked with these uh, technologies. So of course they also had to be educated and formed in order to uh, develop these standards. Uh, on the other side, um, in terms of IKB, as I told you, they implemented a hybrid grid, um, which had never been done before in Austria so far. Uh, also, this issue was quite interesting to find contractors who can do it. And as an innovative, let's say, side project, uh, it was not everything working from the first day on. So, no. Uh, contractors had to be found, they were not only found in Tyrol and they also had to be informed in order to apply these new technologies. Okay, thank you. We have um, someone who is not as shy as everybody else, uh, Mark Kivikas, who, uh, who is welcome now to ask a question. Uh, hello, uh, Grüß Gott, Herr Klewein. Hello. Hello, yes, uh, Kivikas is my name. I represent the company Noda from Sweden in, in Germany. Uh, so we, we optimize district heating systems. Um, one question, you, you talk about uh, hybrid grids. Yes. Uh, if I understand that correctly, is that a combination between uh, electricity grid and, and uh, thermal, which means uh, dist classical district heating uh, systems? Um, we have a connection to the district heating system, but it also makes use, let's say, also of thermal energy so it's more a connection of thermal energy and electricity uh, and electrical energy and what, what do you mean under electric uh, uh, electricity the, pardon is that uh, on the production side you mean or on the production side of course and also um, you need um, somebody who uses this energy afterwards so it's both but as i uh, said before it's a laboratory so at the moment it is working only on a restricted area which is owned by companies from the municipality of Innsbruck they are part of this and when it works there uh, it might be extended to other projects as just nearby there is now uh, developed uh, and let's say a new area for with 500 flats and if it works out it will be connected also to these to these buildings. Okay, thank you. I, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see no one else raise their hand for the moment, so I will continue with the next question. And I think we have to move on to the next um, um, presenter. Uh, we will be running out of time. Uh, I think we'll just uh, continue a bit after noon to continue that. So, uh, which part of the project made the largest impact on the reduction of CO2, in your opinion? Was it more on the building side or the, um, uh, the grid, the energy grid? What, what was the most impactful? Or, or do you have any way to calculate this, actually, in his book? Um, so, the final calculations, of course, are not available, available at the moment. Um, I think we have to answer this question twofold. Of course, um, we we have we reached now uh, more than 65% of uh, renewable energy within the district heating network using um, waste heat, using biogas, using other resources, and we have been refurbishing 66,000 um, square meters of buildings. So. Of course, 66,000 square meters of buildings do not have the same impact as the district heating network. But if we had the same standard over the whole city, over the, over the whole city I think this, this could have, of course, the same or even more uh, impact as the district heating network uh, on its own. Thank you. Uh, and the last question, I think I can answer directly because it's not related to today's topic, is the uh, energy district concept part of the project yes of course and in the next webinars we will look into specifically uh, tools on uh, how to plan energy solutions at district level uh, with very interesting uh, IT tools and and, and others so um, please follow the next webinars I would like now to give the floor to uh, Rosita um, Rosita hold on I'm making you presenter now Thank you very much, Klaus. Uh, if anyone has any more questions for Klaus, please see the contact details on his presentation now, and I'm sure we'll be happy to, to answer to you. 
Okay, Rosita, the floor is yours. Yeah. Please uh, try to make it in uh, 20 minutes max, and then we have questions, and then everybody is free to go for lunch. Okay, thank you, Guillaume. Uh, hello, everybody. So, uh, the purpose of my uh, report is uh, how the municipality planned the energy project within Sinfonia project to become smart cities. But in particular, I try to describe what happened between the moment the idea came up and the implementation. Uh, but also main results, the main challenges and some lessons learned related to the following phases. Planning of the projects, implementation of the projects focused on two main activities, the energy refurbishment buildings owned by the municipality of Bolzano and the uses grid, urban services oriented the sensible grid and the three totem smart points. Uh, Rosita, sorry to interrupt. Do you have slides to show? I, I think you do. Maybe you forgot to share your screen. Uh, yes. Yeah, we can't see your, your yes, slides. Yes, but uh, you... I can't see? Ah, oh, oh, sorry. Just a moment. <laughs> I don't know why. You have to go to the sharing option and then show your slides. Uh, I don't know why. Sorry, just a moment, please. Ah, okay. Super. Super. Okay, perfect. Sorry. So, um, the uh, yes, the com communication and involvement of the tenants. Sorry, just a moment. I open my this. Uh, this. Okay. Uh, communication and involvement of the tenants is the third phase that started at the, the beginning of the Symphonia project and still ongoing for the last monitoring activities. Um, yes, um, I think that it's, um, it can be useful to do a brief introduction. Since 2015, and five, Bolzano has developed an ambition investment plan for large scale urban refurbishment in collaboration with both public and private, private stakeholders. The work undertaken in Sinfonia is a part of this plan. Perfectly in line with the objectives of urban mobility plan of Bolzano and energy master plan of Bolzano, the municipality in uh, uh, 2015, joined the Symphonia project of becoming Demo City. And at the heart of the Symphonia project is a unique cooperation between the uh, cities of Bolzano and Innsbruck, the two demo sites, working hand in hand to achieve 40 to 50% primary, primary energy savings and increase the share of uh, renewables by 20% in uh, two pioneer uh, district. Uh, here uh, we have uh, some uh, words about the pilot city of Bolzano and um, uh, two dwellings uh, refurbished, uh, 345 uh, apartments, one, uh, 142 of the municipality of Bolzano and 203 of IPES. And the um, local Sinfonia partners in Bolzano are municipality of Bolzano, ERAC, European Acad uh, Academy Bozen, IPES, Alperia, Agency for Energy South Tyrol, Casa Clima, and EDM S South Tyrol. Um, the energy refurbishment of, of two large social housing buildings, Via Aslago and Via Passeggiata di Castani, um, interested the uh, municipality of Bolzano 
and the two these are added the energy refurbishment of the three social housing complex of the buildings of IPES via Similan, via Brescia, via Cagliari within the Sinfonia project. The, the creation of a urban services oriented sensible grid um, is, uh, um, can be divided in two parts. The first part is a network of 150 sensors. The second part made of three multifunctional interactive totems. Um, yes, now it's interesting to uh, show you the planning of the project in overall timeline from the concept to implementation. Uh, uh, in the summer of uh, two, uh, 2012, uh, it was uh, the participation proposal. In October of 2012, there was uh, the approval of the City Council for the participation at the tender through a memorandum auto, uh, authorizing the participation at the consortium. And in June 2015, the, appro the approval of the European Community, City Council of Bolzano approved the participation at the project and the uh, um, start of the Symphonia project. Um, in uh, 2012, uh, um, 15, uh, 14, started at the first analysis to plan and define the energy pilot uh, district. And in uh, 2015, uh, three tenders uh, for the selection plan uh, for three demo sites, Via Slago, Via Parma, and Via Passeggiata di Cassano were abandoned. In December of uh, 2015, we had uh, the tenders procedures uh, for the energy refurbishment project. Um, in the summer 2015, uh, there was uh, the approval of a preliminary and final projects. From Autumn 2015 to summer uh, of uh, 2015, the municipality uh, of Bolzano has been commis um, commissioned. In December 2016, it was uh, the approval of the tail project by the new city council, both uh, for Via Passeggiata dei Cassani and for Via Slago. The site of Via Parma was uh, removed from the project by the new city council because the, the world sum was considered too expensive for the, municipality, for the municipal finances. In May of 2019, the energy refurbishment works in Passeggiata dei Cassani were concluded and in July of uh, 2019, the energy reformation works in Via Slago were finished. So, which, uh, which are the challenges along the way? <clears throat> Management of a, of a changes in local consortium. The, ch the changes is uh, in the consortium involved also the municipality of Bolzano because this, which was an external entity, uh, changed its structure and business name, becoming, becoming EDM and entering in the consortium as partner. That fact didn't uh, imply relevant problems for the municipality, except the fact that the budget of this, which was managed by the municipality, was fully shifted on EDM. Regarding the legal barriers, there is a change of anti-seismic regulation of buildings in the public procurement law and the, the new European Gen General Data Protection Regulation required a considerable effort in order to find a way to access the required data for the monitoring of the refurbished flats and the distribution of the questionnaire, questionnaires uh, foreseen by the project. At this point, I consider it will be uh, interesting to show you which costs and in particular which financing models for the works 
was uh, chosen by the municipality of Bolzano. The Sinfonia project was uh, funded to CA contribution um, was um, uh, two million and uh, eight thousand. Uh, um, sorry, uh, eight hundred um, eight to uh, thousand two hundred and forty eight Italian GCS. Uh, contribution. The so-called conto thermico was uh, just over four, um, four million, and uh, provincial contribution, uh, environment, uh, env environmental uh, comp compensation, and uh, for a total amount of uh, um, eight million and uh, one hundred and a thousand and three forty uh, three hundred forty five, which cover. 53% of the world costs. Um, the first steps put in place by the municipality in close collaboration with the local partners are planning of energy pilot district. And um, uh, one uh, uh, suggests uh, that uh, the municipality can um, give to the uh, um, to the uh, cluster cities. It's uh, in, it's very important to engage immediately a specialized task force to realize in a short time all the analysis of a feasibility study. Uh, for example, on uh, similar urban features and uh, similar buildings for age and uh, typology. Um, main action um, for the uh, implement, implementation thesis are to evaluate the goals towards the near, nearest uh, energy zero buildings, calculation of the best sheets, and um, yes, uh, evaluation and adoption by municipality of Bolzano the of the appropriate tender procedure, development of preliminary and the final projects regarding the technical equipment and the systems necessary to achieve the performance defined in the best sheets. This is the site of Passeggiata di Castagni before the inter intervention. Uh, that is composed by two buildings and 72 apartments. This is the site after the intervention. This is the cost. And uh, yes, we can um, um, uh, see that the different from the actual works costs um, to, um, sorry, the, the different for, uh, from uh, the work cost and uh, of the contract awarding uh, to the act actual works cost, it was about of uh, five uh, about uh, uh, yes five hundred uh, um, uh, thousand euro. This is uh, the uh, site of uh, Aslago before the intervention. Uh, and it was composed by four buildings and seven, uh, 70 apartments. And uh, this is the picture uh, after the intervention. The same uh, discourse values, values for the, uh, the, the costs of the uh, Aslago and the main challenges of the in the, this phase it was a brand new experiences for the municipality of Bolzano in the field of a class A energy refurbishment works of a social housing buildings. In fact, only one case of a partial energy renovation for a buildings while the tenants were inside was made in the past improve the cooperation and collaboration between the different departments of the municipality of Bolzano and uh, 
find new forms of financing, financing national and provincial, uh, compatible with the European owns for energy refurbishment works foreseen by Symphonia project. Um, yes, uh, this is uh, the uh, slide of urban services oriented sensible grid that is divided in two parts. Uh, the smart sensor grid at an, an, is a network of a vehicle vehicle traffic monitoring sensor and variable message signs, smart lighting system for the bike path along the Isarco River, public Wi-Fi, etc. And uh, multifunctional interactive totems, which offer info of environmental data, traffic data, touristic data, and news and innovative services to citizens. Um, yes, uh, this is the map. Can you uh, see uh, the distribution of uh, the, the new sensor? And um, in this slide, we have the three totems, parking area, urban area, and green area, uh, which is the main challenges that uh, the municipality uh, have, um, have done. Ho ho overcoming the difficulties relating to the design phase, tender for selection of the company for production and installation, and the production phase. Because the product was out of standard, it had to be tailor-made, high complex in the structure and in the equipment. The last phase is communication and involvement of the tenants, and the main act actions from the beginnings of the project, Municipality of Bolzano is trying to adopt an innovative communication strategy and a coordination strategy for all the construction sites, activities, and uh, all the action involved in Symphonia project. The communication strategy included the five types of activities, organized a long series of meetings addressed to the tenants, create a guideline as called the user manual, set up the demo apartments open to all tenants willing to view the outcomes of energy refurbishment, appoint a role of tenants representative, organize press conference event on the occasion of the construction site inauguration or closing. Uh, the other activities is coordination strategy, uh, includes uh, the organization of a weekly meeting with the main construction companies and all the trade company, companies involved with the, 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 the direction, direction of the works, the architectural, etc., in order to prevent and to solve any problems in a coordinated and a timeline manner, which is the main challenges overcome the initial scepticism and the prevention by tenants, carry out the energy refurbishment works of social housing buildings with the tenants inside, the construction works to invasive has even questioned the patience of the most supportive tenants. The organization and the management by the municipality of the height number of visits to the apartment of the different construction companies, more than 15 times in all, crisis of the rule of the tenants representative and the readiness to find a new alternative solution. This is the last slide where I show you the lesson learned, the time and the effort required for tenants' involvement was enormous. Results for the further projects. We started with workshop, visited an inspection of a renovated flat, and we organized and arranged individual appointments with the tenants to individualize, in, uh, individualize immediately a strategy of coordination among all the actual and its needs to be always ready to redefine and to make it more effective and selected an additional figures to the tenants representative as a professional mediator 
who has been a, of great import, importance for creating a climate of confidence and an active involvement of the towns. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosita, for this very exhaustive um, presentation. Um, for what regards the involvement of tenants and the communication with them, uh, there will be a dedicated webinar in uh, in May on how to engage users in public renovation works. Um, so there we will dive into more details on on how things were done in Bolzano. You've he you've heard of a lot of uh, innovation in the way that uh, the social housing company deals with uh, with the tenants. We will also hear about how um, school children and teachers were in, were engaged uh, as part of the renovation in Innsbruck of the of the schools. Um, so stay tuned for the future webinars to learn more about that. Now, uh, I will uh, ask the same question to Rosita as I asked before to Klaus. Uh, what was the main driver for the city to get involved in this kind of project, um, you know, despite the bureaucratic burden of what it represents uh, for an organization? Uh, was it uh, the money or the uh, desire to be um, a showcase for the city and the region or a mix of both as it was in uh, its work? Uh, Rosita, the question was was for you. If you're still with us. Ah, okay. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, no, um, I think that um, the motivation for the the municipality, the drivers, were um, were um, were both uh, the the yes the the, vol the voluntary to uh, increase the quality of the life of the Bolzano city uh, with the re reduction of the um, uh, um, carbon and uh, uh, um, pollutions and uh, etc. Um, and uh, I think because uh, also um, there, there were these occasions of the European projects. This is um, for okay. Bolzano was a good occasion, uh, yes, to participate. Thank you. Uh, now we have a question uh, from uh, Richard Walkin uh, in, in writing. He's asking um, whether uh, both Bolzano and Innsbruck followed the Passive House Institute NRFIT standard for the refurbishment of buildings or whether there was a difference between Bolzano and Innsbruck. So Klaus told me in the chat now that uh, in principle in Innsbruck uh, they followed the Passive House Institute standards uh, with a question mark for the schools because uh, one of the schools was a cultural heritage building and so it is not clear whether it was possible. Uh, so I can extend the question to, to Rosita. What uh, standard did you follow? Casa Clima, Passive House, something else? Uh, sorry, uh, just a moment. Um, uh, for us, it uh, was um, uh, Casa Clima for the certification. Thank you. Certif Okay. Um, I think that answers the question. Um, I don't see any anyone raising their hands to ask a, a live question, so I will keep reading the other one we have in writing. So uh, it's for a question for both cities, actually. Uh, so how were the architecture offices selected? Uh, were there public contests, or were they um, were they involved directly from the beginning in the design of the of the projects? So, how were the architecture office selected in Bolzano and Innsbruck? Uh, just a moment. <clears throat> so, um, sorry, maybe I can give also the floor to Klaus. If he wants to... Yes, yes, sorry. Um, the evaluation and adoption by the municipality of Bolzano of appropriate, uh, appropriate tender procedures. Considering, uh, considering the, uh, the local requirements and uh, for the selection of designers and the selection of a construction firms, so suite tables uh, for the execution of uh, the energy refurbition works. Um, in fact, the participants were selected according to the quality criteria and economically more advantages offered for the administration. And uh, for the selection of designers, 
um, uh, um, yes, uh, the municipality decided to um, uh, to um, uh, ban uh, two competition uh, for the um, two architectural competition. Yes, and I don't know if I uh, answered. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um... Another point regarding the the standards. I was in parallel <laughs> chatting with Klaus on the on the Go to webinar. Mm -hmm. um, so Klaus was highlighting that um, even though Bolzano followed the Casa Klima standard and Innsbruck uh, passive house, uh, as part of the project, there was um, the idea was to find a way to compare the two so that um, you know you don't compare. Uh, the efficiency and uh, and performance in different ways. So this is interesting aspect actually, and we could maybe cover that in uh, in the webinar that we plan for April, where we will talk about tools for energy planning. Uh, we'll try to see if we can have someone explain that in more details, uh, the, the difference between the standards and how uh, the two were um, compared or, or used in the same project. Is there any other question? I don't see any other written question and I don't see anyone raising a, a hand. Again, don't be shy. I know it's lunchtime, but um, please express yourself. No? All right. Uh, there was one last written question that I, uh, I feared was too technical, but uh, let's bring it now. Uh, were there any use of uh, BIM? Uh, building information modeling tools for the project? I'm assuming yes, but maybe I can uh, let Klaus say a few words about that and Rosita, uh, even though it's probably more for the architects to answer, but let's see if the, if the speakers have um, some insight on this. Uh, Klaus, you're self-muted, so if you want to intervene, yeah. Um, well, um, I know that there have been discussions about using BIM but I'm not sure in which and if they used it within this project or if they only use it now uh, in building new uh, buildings. But please ask this question next week when the housing companies are uh, next week in the next webinar when the housing companies are presenting because they have a more uh, better answer than me. Thanks. And I guess if anyone wants to have more details about the works in Innsbruck, they could also go to the uh, conference that you organize in Innsbruck on 23rd of April, is that right? Would it be a good opportunity to hear more about the local demos? Of course, on the 23rd of April, uh, in the course of the Mission Innovation Austria, um, there will be a Smart Cities Day on Thursday, 23rd of April, and um, Symphonia measures will be presented in the afternoon. We will make site visits to the Symphonia measures the Mention Smart uh, IKB uh, City Lab and to uh, refurbishment, refurbished buildings. One of them will be a public building and a school, and another one will be a, a, a multi family housing residential building. Thank you. So, as you can see, in the next six months, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, thank you for mentioning it. You're welcome. Um, it's also just to say that in the next six months there will be then uh, five more webinars. Uh, one event in Innsbruck that you just heard about, the final conference in Brussels on the 28th of April. And we will also be part of the Beyond 2020 conference in Gothenburg on the 10th of June. It's a conference from the 9th to 11th. I think we will have a session on the 10th. So really you will have a lot of opportunities to hear about Symphonia results, uh, whether they're technical or more policy oriented or uh, stakeholder oriented. Uh, so we'll send you the list of the upcoming events after this webinar to your email addresses. Um, I hope it's okay. Uh, so you will be able to follow all of that and uh, not have any reason not to <laughs> not to know all the details. Everything you wanted to hear about Bolzano and Innsbruck, I think uh, you will have the chance in the next six months. Right. I don't think there is any, any other question. So um, I thank you all. Um, I will send you, as I said, the list of the next webinars and events. Uh, I hope you will attend the next one. There were there will be much more focused on specific solutions and and uh, lessons learned. So thank you again for attending today. Um, in addition to the email, we will uh, ask you, invite you, and nothing mandatory, to fill in a little questionnaire to have your feedback on this first webinar so that you, we can uh, improve more the, uh, the next ones. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Rosita. Thank you, Klaus, for your time. Thank you.
and okay. um, well, have a nice Friday, everybody. Thank you, Guillaume. And, uh... Thank you, and have a nice weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Rosita. Have a good weekend, all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>